This week on Revisiting the Story, we're going to have a look at Davy Crockett. Now, I have been promising this for two years, almost since I did the Daniel Boone video. And uh, my husband passed, and I'm just now getting around to it, but I said I was going to do it. And here it is. Now, uh, David Crockett was born on August 17th, 1786. And he was an American folk hero, frontiersman, soldier, and politician. He is often referred to in popular culture as the king of the wild frontier. He represented Tennessee in the U.S. House of Representatives and served in the Texas Revolution. So what is his story? Let's revisit his story and find out. His father was poor and hired him out to more prosperous farmers to work. His schooling amounted to 100 days of tutoring with a neighbor, and that was it. On August 14, 1806, after being jilted by his first fiance, Crockett marries Mary Polly Finley. The couple would go on to have three children, John Wesley Crockett, William Finley Crockett, and Margaret Finley Crockett. They would then move to Franklin County, Tennessee, to a farm Crockett named Kentuck. Now, after Polly dies in 1815, and I don't know how she dies, Crockett marries widow Elizabeth Patton. Elizabeth brings two children into the marriage, and Crockett and Elizabeth had three more together, Robert Patton Crockett, Rebecca Elvira Crockett, and Matilda Crockett. Later on, moved to Middle Tennessee, brought him close to the area of the Creek War. And this is where he makes a name for himself and becomes famous in the military from 1813 to 1815. Now, after being discharged in 1815, he returns home, and he moves the family to Lawrence County, Tennessee. Now, during all this time is when his first wife dies, and he remarries, and he's having a family at this point. And to support the family, he starts several businesses and begins his political career. In 1821, he was elected to the Tennessee Legislature winning the popularity vote through campaign speeches filled with yarns and homespun metaphors. Yarns being stories, for those of you that are younger that don't know. Now, he was elected a second term to the state legislature in 1823. He lost in 1825, won in 1827 and 1829, lost in 1831, barely won in 1833, and suffered his final defeat in 1835. And he lost in 1835 because everybody favored Andrew Jackson's party. So he's not the most popular politician. His career has many ups and downs. He does write a homespun book. He writes his biography thinking that that will cement his political career. It does not. But I have said on this channel before, when God closes a door, another one opens. Now, in his case, what is going to open, he is going to do like a lot of people and he is going to move west to Texas. He joined the Texas forces. And now why was, what were Texas forces doing in Texas? At that time, uh, Texas and the southern U.S. were territories of Spain and later Mexico. And he would eventually fight 
not only in the Texas Revolution, but he would fight in the Battle of the Alamo. Now, what is the Battle of the Alamo? The Battle of the Alamo is a battle fought during the Texas Revolution for Independence from Mexico that occurred from February 23rd to March 6th, 1836 in San Antonio, Texas. It ended in a decisive victory for Mexican forces over the Texas volunteer troops. It also became a symbol of fierce resistance for the people of Texas and a rallying cry during the Mexican-American War for the Southwestern Territories. Now, the Texas Revolution itself began in October 1835 with a string of Texas victories that drove the Mexican Federal Forces south of the Rio Grande. This success was short-lived, however, because a Mexican Army General, General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana, advanced north to put down the rebels, and most of the victorious Texans' volunteer army went home. However, a small garrison was left. Texans occupied a former Spanish mission called the Alamo. It consisted of three one-story adobe buildings with log palisades encircling an open plaza, and there were lined walls. Inside were co-commanders William Travis and James Bowie, who did not heed the warnings that Santa Ana was coming and did little to store up food, supplies, or ammunition. They were surprised on February 23rd when Santa Ana arrived with his advanced detachment. The last bastion to fall was the chapel where a small Texas detachment controlled the chapel. They also controlled the last cannon. They were able to fire once as Mexican infantry broke through the doors and were then killed in hand-to-hand fighting. The Texas families sheltered there were spared by the Mexicans, but any surviving fighters were executed. Nearly all of the Texan defenders were killed during the battle. Estimates of the number of Mexican soldiers killed vary significantly from 600 to 1,000. Hundreds were wounded. Davy Crockett would perish there. He died on March the 6th, 1836, and he is remembered today for his bravery as a soldier and as a frontiersman. The book that he had written, the autobiography in 1834, originally intended to boost his political career, helped his legend grow, as did a a play by New Yorker James Kirk Paulding, The Lion of the West, which was first performed in 1831 and then actually not published until 1954. There was also a play called His Life in Washington in 1835. I don't know when that was performed publicly. Uh, But there was, lastly, there was a TV show made about him in the 1950s. And that is the story of Davy Crockett. And of course, I'll have my sources down below. But there you have it. That's Davy Crockett, and until next time on Revisiting the Story, goodbye and God bless.